Chapter 7 Village of Giant's Hand Barely Qualified as a Village The story went that some hero had killed the giant nearby, and as the monster fell to the ground, one of its hands crushed a few acres of trees, clearing room for the town. The tree line did follow a hand-like pattern if you squinted and ignored the fact that there were only three fingers. Still, people love their stories. Every building in Giant's Hand looked alike. Each one with a slate roof and wooden walls. The inn was the busiest building in the village. Mostly due to the pub on its first floor. Besides the schoolhouse and open air market, there just wasn't much else to do in the village. Another non too subtle reminder for children to leave to find adventure when they were old enough. As Jack and May galloped through the town just ahead of the enraged mob of teenage boys, Jack wondered if he'd ever see any of it again. Glancing back at his old schoolmates, he hoped not. Although Samson was galloping, more than a few of the boys had kept up because the path's twisting slowed the horse's pace. And now rocks whizzed past Jack's and May's heads every few seconds. Fortunately, most of the boys couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. The closest rock sailed more than a foot over Jack's head, almost taking out a large blackbird in one of the nearby trees. Still, it was only a matter of time before one of them got lucky. Turning back around to push Samson to go faster, Jack almost bumped his head into Maze. She was so close. Out of nowhere, Jack realized that her hair smelled like vanilla. Do you know where we're going? May yelled at him, turning her head slightly in his direction. Jack quickly leaned away, in no way sniffing her hair still. The Black Forest, he shouted back. Your grandmother said we'd find help there, so that's where we go. It's only a couple of days ride from here. A couple of days? May said, her voice rising as she ducked beneath the rock. A little ways back, the horse neighed loudly. Jack kicked Samson lightly to speed up and the horse obliged, barely bursting out of the village and up the path leading out of town. As the last bit of sunlight faded away completely, the last of the boys gave up, but the horse behind them made a second time, much closer now. That can't be good, Jack said glancing back, and there was the horse, one of George's farm animals, only it wasn't one of the village boys riding it. Instead, a man dressed entirely in green barreled down on them, swinging an enormous axe over his head. It's him! May screamed, trying to kick Samson to go faster, but only managing to hit Jack instead. Stop kicking me! Jack yelled. Three branches ripped at their clothes as Samson galloped down in the completely dark path out of town. As not even a light of the moon could penetrate the trees, normally no other horse in the village could outrun Samson. But the huntsman's horse wasn't carrying two riders. That combined with the fact that the huntsman seemed to know how to ride. A skill Jack hadn't exactly mastered yet, meant that he was gaining on them. 
Run all you want! The huntsman shouted from behind them. I'll track you down no matter how far you go. No matter where you hide. I've hit it from bigger guys than you before. Jack yelled back. Why to stand up to him? May said over her shoulder. Jake glanced back, ducking his head to avoid branches as he did. Another made it and they would be within reach of the huntsman's ugly looking axe. That was it. They weren't going to outrun him. They needed a new plan. Hold on, Jack said in May's ear. Hold on tight. What? May said, why, why? Instead of answering, Jack jerked back on the magic bridle, commanding Samson to stop. Magically controlled as he was, Samson planted all four feet in the dirt and leaned back, instantly skidding to a stop. The force of the halt threw Jack into May and May into Samson's neck. Jack managed to lock his legs around the horse and grab May just before. Before she flew off the horse, while the fairy just dug in, almost yanking out a patch of May's hair as she tumbled forward too. The huntsman, meanwhile, galloped right past them, screaming at his own horse to stop. Though his horse did slow down, it wasn't dumb enough to try what Samson had been magically compelled to do. All in all, Jack figured they had about five seconds to figure out what to do before a huntsman could make it back to them. We need to get off the horse, he told May, jumping off himself. The princess quickly dismounted as well, then started to run for the trees. But Jack grabbed her hand and yanked her back behind Samson. What are you doing? She said, pulling her hand from his. He's going to kill us. Not you, girly, the huntsman said, stepping off his exhausted horse. Your boyfriend, on the other hand, is fair game. <laughs> With that... The huntsman swung his axe around and aimed it right at Jack's face. Oh, I'm not her boyfriend, Jack said, taking a quick step to the left. Unfortunately, the axe followed him. I just met her. In fact, if you want to take her, she's yours. What? May said, turning to stare at Jack. You'll let in him tag me? Brave lad, aren't you? The huntsman said, shaking his head with a smile. May growled. You know what, green man? She said to the huntsman. If you want to take him, then he's yours. I don't even care. With that attitude, Jack said, throwing a dark look at the princess. Maybe I will let him take you. Oh, really? May said, her eyes flashing with anger. You don't seem to be doing a whole lot to stop it. You have no idea what I'm doing, Jack said, turning to face the fuming princess. Maybe you should try trusting me. Trust you? May yelled. You just told him to take me. I was tricking him, Jack shouted back. I'm outwitting him. The huntsman burst into <laughs> laughter at that, dropping his axe's tip slightly as he did. Instantly, Jack yanked the magic bridle out of Samson's mouth. His cold, dead eyes came to life, their pure, unadulterated hatred focused straight ahead.